Good evening all. There's uh, quite a lot of very familiar faces here, guys we've seen two years ago. <laughs> very nice seeing you all and I think it's totally overdue. Um, and that will change going forward. We're going to make a bit of a, a combined effort here tonight. My colleague Steve Weber, our CFO, will take you through the, the number crunching of the PFS. And then myself will explain to you, which is very important on Mod's side, uh, there's a two-pronged approach with what we're busy doing. Doing the definitive feasibility study, which is a full-time job, hell-bent on it. I've explained to quite a few people this afternoon the timeline in which this has happened since discovery to where we are today is actually unheard of. Um, but it's done to a very high standard. Maiden resource, scoping study, straight into a PFS, straight into a DFS. And I think that alone speaks for itself because MOT and T3 project has ticked all the boxes from the beginning. Um, a nice image of a rhino, and that means Chikudu in Setswana. So there's a method to the madness here. And by the way, Alex, your timing is perfect. I remember last time everybody was so hungry to rush off and go and eat. Hats off. <laughs> Chikudu, operating company in Botswana. The normal disclaimers, which we won't waste time on. PFS cautionary statement, released 31 January. And by the way, you guys are looking at what we've presented throughout Monday to Friday in London. Um, seeing, I think, Steph, it was more than 45 yeah, investors. Um, I mean, the main takeaway here, uh, market cap is drifting around uh, 100 million. The important thing is here, this area. The spike, first spike, discovery hole. Second spike, drilling. Third spike, releasing the scoping study. And then it's just been drifting forward. A couple of reasons for that. A couple of reasons for that. And the main thing is there's not a lot of a lot of excitement in doing a PFS and a DFS. You've got to go through the motions of the infill drilling. You've got to go through the motions of drilling metallurgical samples, water work, water bores, um, a bore field, geotechnical samples to, dest to establish how deep the how steep the, the pit walls are going to be. And, and then there was a, a lapse from the environmental side where the rigs couldn't get onto the exploration side. Um, very simple to explain that. From the government side, the lady in charge resigned on day 60. So the whole process had to be started again. So both the Botswana government and MOT is learning through these processes with Hansi sitting where it's sitting, never having had any exploration or mining activity in its area. We're getting the hang of that. And you'll see why when we start talking about T20 going forward. Uh, experienced team on the ground, cashed up to $23 million. And I think the main, <coughs> the main takeaway there is our border management, Australian super on the book for 9%, Metal Tiger, our JV partner, 30% JV partner uh, at 6%, and the only outstanding uh, one there is recently, since last week, Lin from Singapore and Hong Kong. 
They've got 5.7, if I'm not uh, mistaken, Steph. Uh, all right, so there we go. Experienced team and uh, the leader of the pack, Julian Hanna. By the way, he sends his regards to all of you guys. I reckon he's just taken off from Heathrow with the Metal Tiger CEO, Michael, joining him and quite a few investors taking them through to Botswana as we're speaking. Bronwyn is in a new edition. She's looking very well after the social side on the ground in Botswana. And the rest of the faces are all well known. Guys who's been around the block, done the mining. Uh, and that, that was a takeaway from me, Steph, this week. Um, it installs a lot of confidence in the investors when they see the team and they see the track record and the reputation of the team that they're dealing with. I think the copper belt scale opportunity is the takeaway from this slide. We are trying to prove up that in this central corridor, we are really dealing with a copper belt a complex, a complex of domes, um, and not only T3 sitting there. I mean, the discoveries to date, is T1, T2, T3, and T4, and that's how far we got. And the question came up this afternoon, why didn't you go back to T4 if, you've, uh, if you found copper there? Well, simply because T3 took all our time and attention. And the focus is on building a mine at T3. So once that mine is in place, and by the way, definitive feasibility outcome, March 2019, then the DFS will be completed. A month later, the permitting will be completed. And decision to mine obviously goes with the outcome of the DFS. I can assure you it's ticking all the boxes as we're going forward. Um, so the reason for, for not going back to T2 is simply because T3 took all our, our focus, focused and hell-bent on making T3 a mine, a copper-producing mine. By the way, the timing seems to be perfect. Everything in the market points to a complete deficit in copper from 2020. Uh, that, is, that seems to be taken on board by everyone. And I'm talking about majors, especially all the big copper producers in South America. It became very apparent and very clear during the World Copper Conference um, that those guys are battling. Those big, huge porphyries are very expensive to mine. And somewhere down the line, the deficit of copper is going to kick in. We'll revert back to the slide at the later stage. There's the, there's the most exciting portion that we've received the environmental approval for drilling the T3 dome. All of us in the company have been waiting for six months for this to happen. And I think it was on Tuesday, Steph, that paper got signed and the rigs are on site. As we're speaking here, we have got at least two rigs already onto all the interpreted domes, which we'll show you. But we waited quite a while for this environmental approval to get out there and prove up that not, we're not only dealing with a T3 copper mine, we're dealing here with a copper province. And that needs to be shown up. Because in many ways, all the work done to date is, is, is completely new and out of the box. It is something that's not been done before. And we can go back literally 25 or more years. The Anglos, Discovery Metals, our neighbor in blue, Cupri Canyon Capital. BHP was there. And they haven't had the success we had in such a small, short spell of time. Huge soil sampling progress done over T20. And this is what I meant when I said earlier, talking about T20, 
I must point it out to you. It's this area lying here, which excites me a lot. We probably have tens of thousands of soil samples taken over there. So the soils, soils map you will see. We've now gone and flown trial blocks of airborne EM over those areas there. That is so exciting, the results from these small trial blocks we've flown, that we've decided to do a, a real proper block of airborne EM over the T20 dome. Except for that, the, the access agreements with the farmers are in place. The EMP has been submitted because of what we learned on the T3 dome. We all know it's taking at least three months to get the environmental approval on the environmental management plan. So submit it early, and by the time that the interpretation of the airborne EM is done, everything is in place to go and drill those targets. And this is, I think, where uh, Steph will be kicking in, Maiden Resources. It's just you guys have seen all this 28 million ton upscale to a 36 million ton uh, resource. And then the, the news flow. News flow is to assure you that in June, which is a month from now, we will have another updated resource. It will explain to you how it was done. No numbers available yet. Have a good look at this. You'll see it. Resource update due. DFS is just going through the year. That's on a T3 pit. T3 underground drilling. Two dedicated rigs to that at this, at this stage, and it's growing. Um, Steph will explain to you feeding and the reasoning behind carrying on with the T1 underground, exploration on the T-Rex dome, all the other domes that we discovered, TEA approval done, drilling has started there, T20 dome, trial airborne EVM, TEA approval, and then T7 domes. And now, Steph, if you wouldn't mind, Steph Weber, CFO from what? Thank you very much. And uh, I had to answer one or two questions earlier. This is not a Chelsea shirt, but they have won the FA Cup for those that they don't know. Um, so the, uh, the T... Uh, Chelsea's won the FA Cup. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Um, so the, T, uh, the T3 project and the outcome of the, of the PFS. So it's, uh, uh, the base case is a 2.5 million tons plant. And then we're going to have an expansion case option that takes us to a 4 million tons per annum uh, uh, throughput. So base case will give us a production on average of about 23,000 tons of copper. And our expansion case about 30,000. Uh, capital is about 155 million. And we've got a slide. The next slide will go into a bit of detail on that. So if you compare that with other copper projects in our production, it's actually at a really low uh, capital intensity. And it's just simply, and I can add to this, because it's quite an quite a easy, simple operation, very clean uh, uh, con as well that we, uh, that we will produce. Base case give you nearly nine year life, and expansion case 12 years, but look out for the updated resource that will release in June that probably will push some of those numbers up. Quite a low stripping ratio, less than five for the base case, and then if we do the expansion case, it reduces to about 4.2, so that, that, that's reasonably low. If you compare that, what Discovery did just in the eastern part of the belt, uh, where, where, it was, uh, where it was much higher. Um, just some of the financial, really a robust little project, and as Jack said, this is, this is hopefully for us just the start. This is only 25 squares of the 12,600 square kilometer land package that we've got. And I mean, if you look at it, sort of other cover province in the world to sit on a land package of 12,600, which we think is quite prospective, that's quite unusual. If you're in Canada, the USA or other places, it probably would have been three or four companies working on it. So we're quite fortunate in something uh, that we've got 12,600 square that we think is quite prospective. But, but back on the financials, really strong financials, I'll just highlight a few NPV of 280 million US. Uh, uh, at a base case, an expansion case of 400. That's done at an assumption of a free, uh, of a copper price that's $3 per pound long term. So I think 
I think we all agree we're all bullish on copper. Copper is now around 310, 315, and it's probably going up uh, in 2020 and later. So I think that's quite that's quite achievable. So potentially upside uh, on that NPV. EBITDA is more than 700 million US on the base case, and if you do the expansion case, it's a 1.1 billion. So really neat little startup uh, project with really strong, uh, really strong, uh, strong financials. <coughs> IRR is nearly 40 percent, both base case and expansion case. A pretty strong. Payback of 2.7 years. We do the expansion case, a slightly higher payback, and the reason for that is that in year three of production, we'll incur all the capital, the, or the expansion capital, which is about $37 million. Mm -hmm. So that just pushed the payback out, but it increased, the, obviously, the financial viability, it pushes the MPV up and the EBITDA and all the other financial me uh, metrics uh, considerably. There's the capital cost, uh, like I said, 155 million for the uh, for the base case. The major numbers there is the processing plant. Clearly, it's going to be the major item. Uh, 61 million, we've got uh, 9 million in for tailings, uh, infrastructure 18 million. Given that it's the PFS stage only, there's a 15% contingency, comes down to about 17 million. And another major item will have uh, up a nine nine months pre-strip program. So the mining uh, pre-strip cost is 34 million. That is something we'll look at very closely during the DFS. We'll see if we can drive this capital number down even even further from where it is, in a, in a, in a clearly in a sensible way. And there's the additional capital. If we do the expansion, 37 million uh, in year three, but uh, obviously with substantial uh, substantial upside. Uh, our cost is quite low, about. Uh, $1.22 uh, $1. per pound, so the copper price for $3, you can sort of see that's quite a, quite a nice margin. There's going to be a lot of focus during the DFS, but also when we're in production to drive this down to about $1 per pound. And you can just work out the, the obviously the margins uh, at a copper price just a free, a free, a free dollars there, 66%, 66% margin. So with a lot of focus, we can drive that down further, especially maybe mining costs. There's a lot of mining contractors. This is going to be a big contract if you look at the pre-strip and also a life of mine of nine, potentially 12 years. So a lot of mining contractors, especially out of South Africa, that is, uh, uh, that is keen on business. So I think we can come to a really good outcome that will help our, our mining costs. The only other comment that I'll make just on this slide, so the 155 million capital, how will we fund it? Uh, well, probably if you look at the capex, you'll add working capital and a bit of overrun facilities that you normally do. So it's probably a number between 180 to 200. We've run the, the debt capacity uh, after the PFS. The debt capacity of this project is really high. Having said that, we be really prudent in the way we go about it. We, we won't over, overly gear the company, but the possibility is there. We've got already uh, 12 financial institutions, bank and, banks and alternative debt funds that's talking to us, they're all over this project. The European banks, uh, the South African banks, and the traditional suspects when it comes to the alternative debt, already some of them trying to put pre-construction financing in front of us. It's just too early, but really a lot of interest. More than half of them is already in the data room and, and showing a lot of interest. So on the debt side, very comfortable that we're gonna, uh, we're, we're gonna fund it. If you then look at the sort of the equity side, we've got a really strong base in Australia, very strong support, but Aussie Super on the I think you all know it's a really large fund, 9% border management, 14%, a lot of support from the East Coast. Recently, with our 18 million placement, we've expanded into uh, Hong Kong and Singapore. We, Jacques mentioned that we've got a limb mining on for 5.7%. Then going substantial is also going to attract some additional funds out of Singapore specifically to, uh, to contribute. So they will certainly be involved. And then the additional thing we're looking at is London. We've had a Few visits to London uh, last year, and also uh, uh, during last uh, during this week, I think we have said uh, we've met with more than 40 companies. So it's a lot of interest, not only from the big funds, the really big mining funds that we've met with this week, but also a lot of generalist funds. So we think for all of those sources and some of the big players going to play from the equity side, we're very confident that, that we can fund it going into 2019. Uh, current cash position is 23 million, like Jack has mentioned that uh, uh, we've got a 15 million exploration program over the next 12 months. The bulk of that's going to focus on the T3 dome complex that just looks really exciting. And then we're going to go into the T20 20 dome complex and prove up uh, this copper belt we've got. Uh, feasibility study to complete the def definitive feasibility will be another 5 million. So we've got enough funding to take us through to a uh, to, uh, to, uh, to decision to mine and continue aggressive drilling program in conjunction with developing this uh, really nice little startup project. I'll just make one point here, uh, Jacques, and then I'll give it probably over to you. Um, so just on the, uh, uh, the, the production profile, you'll sort of see we, 
sort of round, and you look at the base case in orange, we're around sort of the 20, 25,000 level. If you do, you do the expansion, in average it takes us to 30,000, but there's years where we've got really high copper con in, the, in the con, it will sort of be 35,000. We want to build this, this T3 is just the starting project for us. We want to build this to a mid-cap company, and that needs, means we need to get this to 60,000 tons per annum. So how are we going to do that? We think there's a lot of potential in the T3 underground. There's a bit of potential. We've already got a small resource in T1. We're drilling and teasing that out with two drill rigs at the moment, so that can easily add, we're confident, that another 10 to 15,000. So that takes you to 40, 45, and then there's just huge potential in the T3 T3 dome complex. I mean, I'll get Jacques to talk about some really nice slides uh, following about the potential. We've got seven, uh, we, we now talk about a T3 dome complex, uh, uh, and there's seven domes within, within this dome, within this dome complex. Uh, I'll probably leave it there because it's dangerous when the bean counter starts <laughs> talking about geology. But <laughs> Thanks, Steph. <laughs> All right. Thanks, any slides? So. <laughs> the one you're looking at there, which is our orange and blue, I need to remind you that that was based on the PFS numbers that came out during the resource of August 2017. Mm -hmm. So those, that's what you see there, hails from six, nine months ago. Obviously, the updated resource next month is going to change this picture completely. Base case expansion, base uh, case, we're going to do, do it fast and snappy. You see why everything is working out for us here. There you can see the pit outline, pit walls, thickness, we've got thickness. Certain places 75 to 100 meters thick. At the end of the day, the decision must be made by the mine designers, which is in, in our case, SRK, Cardiff. They've been appointed. We're using CSA, top-notch guys from Australia who's doing our updated resource for us. Knights pit salt onto the tailings. Um, so, so for the DFS, you know, we want to tick all the boxes and they've done it as properly as possible. But you get a cross section there showing you how it's going to change and why the mining is so cheap because it's a simple way of mining. Straight into sulfides after pre-stripping is done. No oxides to deal with, no chrysocolla, malachite, worth mentioning, which was the full main reason why DML fell over. Here you can see ex basic base case, expansion case of the pit. And wonderful pictures showing what the August resource looked like with, with its wireframes. This is just from March, done in-house. The expanded case resource, which we should see happening very shortly. And you can see wh wh how we've teased it out to the sides. There's the important one, the T3 underground. We're dealing with at least two veins, dipping, <coughs> dipping shallowly towards the north. Both approximately five meters thick with grades ranging from 1.5 to 2% copper. So we need to get 10 million tons from there and we are very much on track to achieve that. Just a con grades, good recoveries, 93% top of nine. And this copper con will be something highly sought after by the smelters. They can use that to blend. And no ugly anim uh, minerals like arsenic and lead in it. We're talking PPMs. So already Steph is receiving a lot of attention from the off-takers, even regarding the, the products. So it's again uh, that for those of you who've been to site, this is what you'll see on the road. Tide Highway, 12 kilometers from the project. Government has promised power in 2020. Because it's Africa, we're dealing and hoping for 2022. So, <laughs> so we'll be, we'll be making use of generated power. In the beginning, first two years, 
and then once the grid is there, obviously the costs are going to go down hugely. Site layout of the plant pit tailing dams. Lovely team of local Motswana workers there. Very dedicated. Al Monte Corso put on site for them recently. We've started with a, a housing complex, five kilometers out of Ghanzi, towards the north. It's currently going to house roughly 40. It should be scaled up to 400. So the workers will be bussed in and bussed out, out of the town of Ghanzi, and not living on the mine. And now we get to the exciting part. We, we can all of a sudden put a rig on. We've waited so long for this to happen. Environmental approval for the T3 dome complex. State of the art airborne EM flown, looking down 500 meters. CDI is created over every flight line as a chopper flew by one of the best geophysicists in the world, Cas Lotta, well known both in Australia and Canada. So the interpretation is right up there, top notch. Well, all the yellow domes that you look at there are different domal figures, which you'll see in section very shortly. This is obviously the most important one to us, this area here. Why? Because this is flown right up to the boundary with Cooper Canyon's Chalcocyte Zone. I think I drilled that in 2010, 29. Mm -hmm. Sitting right here, expecting it to plunge underneath the mud ground. And through his bob, there it pops up. Continued up there. So I think as we're speaking, if I'm talking under correction, we've got a drill rig on A1 area drilling at this stage and a drill rig on A4 drilling west of the pit. Um, water bores in place and enough money, thank heavens, to drill out this whole area. Currently we are down or decided on 60 drills, 400 meter depth if I'm not cor correct. Yep. So that's how we're going to scout out the whole of the T3 dome. And I mean, you, you guys can think for yourself what will happen if any of these first holes do make a hit. There's little T3, mid cap T3, showing up as a black dot with the rest of the domes around the, only the T3 area. Uh, I'll le leave it to your imagination. We are planning and we are talking to Metal Tiger to accelerate our drilling on this area. So far they've contributed, lovely JV partners in all respects, but we do need to accelerate the drilling on the T3 dome. So the idea is to next week add another two rigs to site, and if all goes well, add more rigs to site, because these domes need to be drill tested. That's the long and short of it. There you can see the T3 pit outline. It's lying right on top of the dome, developed there, with a big T-Rex below it. The nicety of that slide is the mere fact that we've got drill core to back up what the airborne EM is showing us. So all the conductive areas we've picked up and we know why they're there and how they, how they came to be there. We then took that template and applied it on all the other domes to find the rest of them. Some of them daylighting, some of them 50 meters from surface, which would already explain why you don't find soil anomalies on top of it. You've got the calcrete layer, you've got 50 meters of sand, so you will, there's no, just no way you will find a soil anomaly on top of that. But at least now we know what's lying underneath. We're looking for the breaks in the conductive material there and that's why the planned drill holes are aimed to go in there. This is just a quick snapshot at T1 where we've got the two rigs. This is the existing resource 
we've actually done the scoping study on that in 2015. 2.7 million tons, 2% 2 copper, 50 gram silver, lying at T1. We're busy to drill out this panel, tease it out to 10 million tons, so and then probably move left. Yeah, left is the direction to move into. And then lastly, the T20 dome. This is, this is exciting to me. There, right at the edge, you can see a T20, T4 target. All five or six holes drilled by Mott found copper there. Right in the beginning, when we started the drilling campaign. Uh, absolutely wonderful airborne EM. Since these blue blocks were tested, they were our trial blocks. One, two, and three. 1st of July, the bigger area, flying the whole area, will kick off. Two week program, half a million dollars. It's going to be interpreted, done exactly the same way we've done on T3. And I think the results that will come out of this will be very good. Just, just a little totally out-of-the-box feature that we picked up by flying one of these trials. It appears here it's a new target. Nobody can explain why it's looking like that. Drilling will need, need to be done, right? that's all. Investment case, they made all the drilling. There's enough drilling. This is a two-pronged approach. Building a mine, T3 on the one hand, doing regional exploration on the other hand, focused absolutely on proving up that this is a copper belt that we're dealing with and not a single little T3 mine. Thank you very much. Any questions, you're welcome.